Holy shock absorbers, Batman! Hello there and welcome back to Build With The Boys. As we said at the top of the episode, holy shock absorbers, Batman. We have got parts 7, 8, 9 and 10 of Hashette's Build the Batmobile Tumblr. And I just to clear up some confusion with this one, because a couple of you, I'm in an R in, um, and I've seen some lively debates about over who's got what, who should have what, why they've got this and I haven't got that, and blah, 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 blah. Well, we'll go through it again. So it was two issues uh, every month for the first six. Then it's four issues, it takes up to ten. And then after this one, so this is only one we get four, we get six. So we're going to get six every time after this one. So you're going to get six every six weeks, not a month, six every six weeks. However, just to make this a little bit more confusing, um, this one was late. So because the bank holidays and Easter, this one was late by a few days. So you're actually going to get it a little sooner than six weeks. So 11 through to 16 are due to ship on the 5th of May. That's around about the earliest they're going to ship the 5th of May. Take a week into that, I'd say we're going to see these around about the 12th of May when these are going to start dropping through letter boxes. So 11 to 16 should be arriving around about 12th of May. Uh, with regards to the ones that are in store, it's still fortnightly. So I believe issue 9 is available on Wednesday in store. And then two weeks' time, 10 will be available. By the time they get up to 16, we'll receive the... Um, We'll receive, well, but something up to 14, we'll receive the next six. We'll get 16, blah, blah, blah. Don't concern yourself with it. Just concern yourself with what you've got coming. Don't worry about what's in the news agents. If you're um, a subscriber, if you're in the news agents, don't worry about the subscribers. Again, it doesn't affect your build. As I said, this is not a race. It's it's uh, a marathon. We're all going to get to where we're going to get to. So the subscribers in the early days will pull past the people that buy them from the, um, the news agents. But then eventually, with the way the calendar works, we end up around about the same place it's fine we're gonna finish at the same time no one wins there's no prizes for coming first um so let's get into this so we are building for seven eight nine and ten we're building a lot of the front building onto the bulkhead one of these you get next to well two of these you get next to nothing in but we'll go into that when we get to them um so we're going to crack on with number seven at the end of this one we're going to have our bat chat and we're going to be talking about my personal favorite batmobile we've already covered the 66 future batmobile we're going to be talking about the 89 batmobile which is a beautiful beautiful batmobile performance wise well we'll talk about that let's get into this let's see what we've got to do and uh, let's get this one built so here is pack number seven now Oh, look, the lovely Dark Knight logo. Right, I just got to tell you, I absolutely hate this. I hate this with a passion, and there's a reason for that. The nature of what I do for a living, I have to talk to branding people and marketing people all the time, and things like this drive me mad. It's completely unnecessary, okay? Um, this is coming packaged with a Dark Knight magazine to subscribers and people who know what they're buying. This is overkill. So whatever they're paying to print this onto a box, stop. Stop. And uh, give us the discount on the uh, on the build itself. Because this is this is ridiculous. So it also means print a of boxes that on. All you can ever use them for is Dark Knight. You can't use them for anything else. It's just a gripe of mine. It's cute. It's nice, but it's overkill and it's unnecessary. So what have we got inside here? This is very interestingly packaged. Let's shake this out. Okay. I don't like the way this is packaged. Look at the state of that. So all this metal's just been clattering around into each other. Um, my issues arrived to me that look like they've been loaded, they've been packed with a cannon as well, so I'm not particularly happy about that. Sorry, I don't mean to sound miserable, but I, um, yeah, I really was not impressed with the way these turned up. So these are all the parts we've got. We've got quite a lot, and this is quite an in-depth one in this one. Um, we've got, we've got a lot. That part there, is that part there? That's going to come up later on, and we'll have a chat about that. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attempt, essentially attaching the wheel that we built to the um, to the bulkhead. So we have got our bulkhead here, which I'll bring up because this is going to be featuring quite heavily in this one. Uh, we're going to be working on this side, I believe. Um, so let's get into this. Okay, so these are the parts we're going to start with. We've got our two shock absorber rods here, and we've got our shock absorber link. I'll zoom in so you can see what we're doing. That's out. That's in. Right. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to take in this head here and it's going to sit over there like so. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to go just over there. Let's get this around the right way. Like so. I'm going to hold that in place with a single UM screw. So let's load one of those up. 
and I got this in place. Okay, so a single one in there just to hold this one in place. Nice snug. Nice and tight. Hold that in. And there we have it. We'll do the other one as well. Okay, so this part's now where it needs to be. We got both those on. The, the instructions on this one get a little confusing, so I'm going to try and make it a little bit more palatable for you. We're going to be using this here. Uh, so this pin here needs to be facing the outer side of this wheel. Um, and what we're going to do is this is going to sit over here like so. So that's, that's the position you need to line this up in. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our rod here. Uh, I'm making sure this is the right way around. So with this lip part facing the wheel, that's going to slot in there. And then make sure these absorbers are right. We're going to thread the bar all the way through these parts to hold them in place. It's going to be fiddly. But let's see, <laughs> I'll see if I can do it. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Right, let's just get this started. Okay, so three we go. Let's move over and put this, slide this in. We need this to come through as well. There we go. So we're where we need to be. And that's going to come to protrude out the side of this one here. So you can see that's where it is there. Once that's all locked in place, we're going to take this bracket here. With the lip facing outwards. We're going to line this up on here. It will go straight through. There is like a lug. There you go. So we're going to come down there and we're going to put a single UM screw to hold all of this together. Again, I am using the 3-in-1 method, which is the 3-in-1 oil over here. It just makes life a lot bloody simpler. It really does. So all we do is it's just some 3-in-1 oil in a, in a dish over here. We touch the screw head into the 3-in-1 just to help it on its way. Pop that one in there. He says, just drop the bloody thing. There we go. So now that is locked in place exactly as it needs to be, where it needs to go, as it needs to be. And we are happy. I'm going to tighten that up as much as I can get it to go. I don't want to over tighten it but I certainly don't want it loose. That's where we need to be. So that's how we're now looking. So you should have freedom of movement on this part. This part should have more limited movement to it. Um, and then this should be quite free to move here. So it's uh, yeah, it's all over the joint at the moment, but we're getting there. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach all of this to the bulkhead. So we're gonna bring the bulkhead over and we're gonna get that done. Okay, so turning this one, let's move this to the side. We're going to bring over our bulkhead, and this is the section we're going to be working on here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching this to here. Uh, now, to do that, we're going to line these up and offer this to this, and then hopefully we should get these to hold. Now, I'm only going to do one at a time. I'm not going to, I think, try and do all four is going to be bloody optimistic, to be honest with you, because this just looks fiddly. But we'll, uh, we'll get this to hold, we'll get this to take. There we go, I mean, that helps. So let's get one on. And then we'll know what we're doing. There we go. So that's that one in. Now we're going to hold hold this in with four AP screws. So I'm going to put two into that one and then we'll do the other side. Okay, so we're going to try and get some of these screws in here. Uh, it's very dark, I mean, that's the nature of Batman. But there we go. Black screws into black parts. Not the easiest thing to see. We'll get our first one, and this is AM screws we're using. If it's an AP, I apologize for that. This is AM. Uh, and as we've discussed before, the P and the M, what they stand for. So after the, the letter is the size, so A would be the size. The code after is for what it's going into. So the M is for metal. So you know AM is metal to metal screw, and AP would be 
plastic. So that screws into plastic. Let's get the second one here in the diagonal. Spider webbing. That's cool. I was always taught to go diagonals and spider web your parts, boy. That's what I was always told. So that's what I'll do. That's that one. Two more. This will be a bit more secure and I think it should be a lot easier to work on after that. I hope. Um, I am already thinking ahead and thinking how difficult this is going to be to put the second one in when all this is in the way. But um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's get the second one, the third one in here. So third one in and then a fourth and final one. And that will go in just down there. And I'll tell you, with the three-in-one oil, it makes this job so much bloody easier. You have no idea. I mean, without the oil, it's it's a fight to get some of these metal screws in and get them as tight as you want them to be with the oil. It's a dream. So that's that in. So we should now be, we are, held in place. Good, good, good. So where we need to be, we'll hold on to here. We've got movement, we're happy. We're happy. So that's where we need to be. Um, right, the next thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be uh, securing the shock absorbers in place. So let me get the screws ready for that and let's get that done. Okay, so I put the headlamp on first. I'm trying to light this up because it's so dark. I'm trying to, I'm trying to light this as much as I can. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our shock, shock absorber rod here. We're going into this um, holder here and on this section just here. Now this looks like it's going to be easier said than bloody done, if I'm honest with you. But let's see what we can do. Why is this? Ha ha ha, this is not going to be easy. Let's get this wheel out of the way. Right, so we need to go in there first, then we need to go into the uh then we need to go into the rod. Right. Let's get this in there first. There we go. Well, that makes life a lot easier. Right. Then we'll pop that one in. Okay, so don't be afraid to move this around. I'm gonna hold this in place with a single RP. Now this is RP, so this is oh going into plastic, so there's no reason to use oil on this one. Oil probably won't help you here, it'll probably hinder you. So uh, don't oil these ones up, you don't need to. And that's a single RP, just in here. They will cut their own threads, try and get it in as straight as possible when you do this. So that's my RP in, there we go. So now you can see what we've got going on. We've got the shock absorbers in place. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take uh, uh, the bar joint. Um, that's going to be the front suspension pin. Wow. <laughs> this is going to get complicated as well. Okay, so this is going to go over this. So this pin here, you can see. Let me see if I can zoom in on that one for you. There we go. Right, so you can see what we've got going on here. We'll work on this pin next, and then we are going to bring the bar down, and we're going to attach that to it as well. So uh, this is going to be easier said than done. Uh, insert the bar joint seven jeans corresponding pin on the right front suspension as shown by the red arrow. But it doesn't say to screw it in. That's so odd. There's no instruction to screw this in. Hmm. Well, it's very unusual. There's no instruction there saying to screw this to anything, which I find a bit weird because there's definitely a screw in it in the image. And that definitely needs a screw in it. But there is literally nothing. There is no instruction to put a screw through this thing. Insert bar joint 7G into the corresponding pin on the right front suspension as shown by the red arrow. I don't trust that. There is no instruction to put a screw in that at all. But I don't believe for one second you don't put a screw in it. 
I think that's held in an RP screw. In fact, I'm sure of it. But there is definitely no instruction in this magazine saying to do that. But I'm going to do it anyway. We've got three RP screws, typically give you one spare. Now there's no mention of an RP screw anywhere else. So I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Oh, see, there's definitely a screw head there. Hmm. Yeah, that is most unusual. That really is. Right, let's move this out of the way. So that folds over the back there. Okay, we're now bringing this arm down. And this is going to attach to this. So that's going to go like that there, and then we're going to hold that in place with a UP screw. So I'll remain in UP screw because we have got a spare as well. Uh, is it a UP? Yes, yeah, a UP. So let's go our UP screws. These are quite long, but again, that's UP, so it's plastic. So there's no need to um, there's no need to use the oil on these because some metal screw go into plastic. There we go. You need to keep this as straight as possible because if you don't, you're going to deviate and you're going to start pushing and pulling. Now this will come out through the other side. There you go. So that's in. So that's where that needs to be. Okay, that's good. That's Aha. Now you can see the movement that we've got going on. So we're happy. But there is, as I said, there. unless I'm missing something complete, there is no instruction to screw that in. But I'm, I've am i screwed mine in with the RP screw. I would advise you to do the same, because um, that's got to be where that goes. There can be nowhere else for it. Um, okay, so for the immediate, that's us done with this part. Let's move that over there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be working on this part here. Uh, and we need... <laughs> right. So this is the part we're going to be working on next. We also need this little part here. Now, the reason why this one's making me laugh is because, believe it or not, in issue nine, that's literally all we get to work on. This piece, I'm not even joking, but that's a, that's a discussion for later on, I think. But uh, yeah, that's what, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be using two AP screws for this one. It's not AMs, APs. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw this into place uh, on either side of here. So let's get that done. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. So this is what we're doing. So again, it's plastic. There's no reason to use that screws in this one. So we're going to pop this one in. Um, now there are holes on all sides of it, so I don't think it makes an odds which way around this goes because it's, it's got to go in that way. So we'll pop this in the middle. That is snug. So then that goes. So it's one and one more on the other side. So we're going to put another one into this side. That's that one done. So that's that in. Okay. Uh, the image shows the right steering bar with the seven correct fit in its mountain, and that's exactly where we need to be. So that's got the, the fixing bar in place. This is now going into the back of the bulkhead. So let's bring the bulkhead over. And we're going in through here. I see where we need to be. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get this into position. Okay, this is, uh, this is actually surprisingly a lot more than I thought it was going to be, which is good because we've got very little to do after this. Um, so this one's going to come through here. We're going to go into there. And what's going to happen is we are going to put the screw through there to hold this into place. Let's find which screw that needs to be. Uh, yep, yep, yep. 
So that goes through there, that goes through there, that goes through there. Two AP screws, well, that's gonna be interesting how the bloody hell we're gonna access the other side of it. But, well, I guess we're gonna find out, aren't we? So, this, uh, this is gonna be snug as you like. But let's see if we can, uh, if we can get in there. Right, so we're gonna come through there. How much movement have we got? Oh, we got loads of movement, good, okay. Well, that's panic over then. I was, I was panicking there thinking, Christ, that's not gonna be possible. This is gonna be bloody fiddly though, as you can see, but I'm gonna try and do it in real time. Show you how, uh, how I managed it or didn't manage it. My God. Yeah, this ain't fun. <laughs> Why? Okay. There's got to be an easier way. I'm going to figure out an easier way. So I did find a slightly easier way, and that is just to firm this up. Make this as, as firm as you can, sort of stay in place to try and do it. But there's, there's no, you know, I, I couldn't find a miracle cure for that. This is just bloody fiddly. It really is. Once you work lined up, the screws go in quite easily. Um, but tighten this as much as you can at first so it's, it stays and holds. Then you can loosen it if needs be. But that is everything there is to do in stage seven. So that is where we need to be. Uh, zoom out so you can have a look. So this is how we're now looking. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So that is how ultimately how our turning is going to work. You can see as we turn this, our wheel turns. Let me just get a mega zoom out there. There we go. So our steering is going to hold this, and this is how the steering is going to work. I'm never going to use the bloody steering, I never do on these models, but <laughs> we've got working steering, and that's what matters. Um, the, the concern I've got at this point is at some point we've got to do all this again over here. Now, this was quite difficult when I had all the freedom of movement of this section. Trying to get this one on here when I'm being blocked by all of this, got to be a bit of a nightmare, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's have a chat. That's that one complete. Now, I, uh, it's um, it's fiddly, is what it is. I mean, it's doable. It's completely doable. It's not overly complicated, and it's not. It's 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 a frustrating build. That one, I'd say. It's not. It's not complicated. It's just frustrating because you're trying to get into the. You could do with a third hand. That's what I needed. I needed a third hand. So if you've got a third hand, if you've got someone to hand that can help you with that. That will make that a lot easier if they can hold it in place whilst you're trying to hold all the parts and screw it at the same time. Forget about it. Um, but I mean, it's doable because I've just done it. So you can do it as well. You'll, you'll be able to do this. It's just a bit of a nuisance. But it's nice to see, it's clever to see how this steering goes together and how it works and seeing the piston rods and whatnot work, I think is is lovely. And um, it's worked out great. If you're just sticking around for the build, thank you for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. It helps our channel massively. Um, if you stick around for our bat chats, we are going to be talking about my personal favourite Batmobile. So the last episodes we talked about the 66 Futura, the next Batman on film, uh, it featured the 89 Batmobile, and I absolutely adore this thing, and this is it. So that's the 89 Batmobile. Uh, the feature in the Tim Burton movie. Now, we're going to talk about the movie in a later issue. Um, so I'm going to try to avoid talking too much about the movie and just focus on the car. So when the car was first unveiled, people lost their minds, and which which built a lot of good favour because the year that film came out, there were a lot of kind of, mm, I don't know about this, and people weren't really happy with the casting and things like that. But the Batmobile really won a lot of people over because it's like, wow, that is incredibly stylish and it fits the look of that movie. It's very art deco, it's very sleek. It looks like something from the 1930s, but somehow from the future at the same time. Beautiful thing. Stylistically, it is stunning. It looks absolutely amazing. It's one of the best looking Batmobiles, if not the best looking Batmobiles they've ever produced. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous car. I really do. However, um, even the movie itself shows that it's not... It's not the most practical vehicle in the world because I remember something I thought was really cool. There's a scene in Batman where he has to make a very tight turn and to do it, it's got side mounted grapple hooks. So on either side of the 89 Batmobile with grapple hooks that can fire at the sides of it. And he fires one at the side, it wraps around a lamppost and he can swing around the corner. Um, and I remember thinking that was the coolest thing. And then as an adult, I look at it and go, that's terrible. That means it's not regular 
taking corners. So you can do all these things, but without a lamppost, you, you can't take a corner. Um, so it's, it's not the most practical vehicle. 22 feet long, which is ridiculous. It's 22 feet long. Now, to get that in the scope as well, the actual cockpit where you sit is 14 feet back from the front of the car. So you're 14 foot away from the, the front of the car. That must be very difficult to drive. Um, the car itself was not built uh, from scratch. So it wasn't a scratch build. That actually is our tumbler that we're building. We'll talk about that in a later issue as well. But it was built on the, the, the chassis of a Chevrolet Impala. So the 89 Batmobile is built on a chassis and a half of a Chevrolet Impala. They got, they got two of them basically bolted them together. Um, and it's got a, it's got V8 engine in it. So it did shift. I mean, it, it went a decent speed, but the, the bodywork itself of the actual um, film used car wouldn't survive much. I mean, if you, if you, it's all fiberglass. If you crashed into something, that thing would crack and fall apart. Um, there were, there's, so they had the one for kind of long shots where this thing was turbo and long, that had the V8 engine, but they also had an electric version. So they had one that was a 48 uh, volt electric version that was used for kind of more studio shots. Um, because the film was, was shot in London, um, and Battersea Power Station acted uh, as, as the backdrop for the, the big scene where it, it goes flying through the factory and blows it up. That was the one that was used. They were using the um, the engine for and long shots when you see it zipping through forest roads. Again, that was the one with the engine. Everything else, so the the more studio shots you saw of it, they used the electric version of it. It's just more practical. Um, but it is a it is a truly beautiful car. But practical wise, it's not there. So I actually had the the kind of joy, if you will, of being able to rent one of these. So I had to rent one of these for a company I was working for, and finding one that actually did what we wanted it to do was now on impossible because most of the um, the replicas of this have tiny petrol tanks, really small, and they'd only do about fifteen miles. That was it, and then you'd have to fill it up again because they're not built for they weren't built for road. That's that's not what they're for. They're built for looks. So the idea is you can drive it around some and then it goes on the back of a flatbed and you take it somewhere else. But certainly for long distances, it's not there. I do know they exist. I do know people have um, made theirs and, and put big petrol tanks and can drive them around. I know there is a guy in America that owns one that entertains children that, that has a, a street legal 89 Batmobile. But it is a gorgeous thing. And the other thing as well that I think sold a lot of people on this one is there is the scene in the 89 Batmobile where they're, they're trying to attack, in the 89 Batmobile, they're trying to attack the Batmobile. And he just ever so coolly says, shields. And it cocoons itself, and this is what it looks like. So it could completely cocoon itself from, from any kind of attack. Or, and it just looked amazing. And, and me being, I think I was 10 years old when I watched uh, Batman, just blew my mind, man. Watching that shield just all over the car. Like, That's incredible. And uh, it looks so cool. It was the coolest thing. I look at it now and it looks like a jelly mold. But at the time, I was I was blown away by this. I really was. But the 89 Batmobile, for me, is an absolute classic. I think it is a beautiful thing. It certainly stood the test of time. And as far as I'm aware, with the exception, again, of the Tumblr, it's the only Batmobile that made it to more than one movie. So it... it Bizarrely, um, every the Batmobile has changed and changed a lot. Every movie it's in it changes. So, Batman Forever's got a different one. Batman and Robin's got a different one. And the Tumblr only appears really in one and a half Batman movies. I mean, it gets trashed pretty quickly in in The Dark Knight, but um, it did make it. So it was in Batman. It was in Batman Returns. There were some slight tweaks to it, but it's got all kinds of kooky gadgets. Now, the worst thing about the eight nine Batmobile for me, and I think for a lot of people. And this, this kind of effect of the enjoyment of the film, and again, we'll talk about this when we actually discuss the film, um, is that it had twin Browning machine guns built into the um, into the front of it, which somewhat goes against Batman's no-killing thing. Because if, you, if you're going to unload um, two Browning machine guns, you're going to kill a lot of people. So that seemed an odd choice. So rather than having some of the the kookier Batman gadgets, this this thing was armed to kill. So it's also got grenades as well. Grenades would come out of the wheels. Um, they had what were called shin breakers, which would come out of either side. So you could drive along and just take people's legs out. Um, it's, it's a brutal piece of kit. So it goes against sort of comic book Batman quite a lot, but 
it is an iconic thing and it, it certainly i mean it, it captured uh it captured generation man because that car was just beautiful and it sold you i mean they used that as a big part of it when they released that kind of sizzle reel for the movie the batmobile was a big part of it so when they're not showing you images of, of keaton and and um nicholson as as your hero and your villain they were showing a lot of batmobile a hell of a lot of batmobile and um man what a beautiful thing just the fins at the back the fire kicking out of it the it is an absolutely gorgeous vehicle and the only one at this stage that we've not seen a part work of so we've got a tumbler we got that we're doing that now we do know the 66 batmobile part work exists it's out there eagle moss will go in to do it and then eagle moss you know and they're pushing up daisers but they did ask, so a, a survey went out about what Batmobile would you like to build? Um, and Tumblr actually won that survey, which was surprising to me. Um, but what came second was the 89. 66 actually came last in that survey. I think there's an inevitability. At some point, we're going to see an 89 Batmobile part work. I, I'd bet my house on it. I think if, if I had to say what's a safe bet of what will one day be a, a part work model, the 89 Batmobile is almost a shoe in and wouldn't it be lovely to have a menagerie of Batmobiles? Wouldn't it be lovely to go with our Tumblr to have a 66 and an 89 as well? Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? I'd love that. But that's all for this one. That's the 89 Batmobile. Um, we will be back very, very soon um, with issue eight of Hachette's Build, the Batmobile Tumblr. Um, in a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. Uh, I will catch you on the next one. Remember, until then, Gotham needs us.